Hello, welcome to Organic Elegance. I'm your host, Felicia Heinsen, and today with me I have Kim and Patricia, Petrina, from Brew, Bis from Brew Skits. And they're going to be talking with us all about what they do and what they do for the community. So, guys, this is your store. And where are you guys located at? So we're located in Telford, Pennsylvania, which is just below Quakertown, so not too far from here, about an hour from here. We've uh, been in the store about two years now. The store enabled us to have somewhere that not only we could bake and package, but it enabled us to have our retail space in the front. So now we can have our customers come right to the store and buy not only our biscuits, but we, we say we're not just dog bones anymore. We have all kinds of products in the store. We have dog stuff, cat stuff, even stuff for people. But everything in the store is USA made. And these are the little biscuits that they have. And can you explain just to the process of how they're created and the unique, sustainable process? Sure. So our name, Brewskits, is actually brew like a beer and then skit like a biscuit. Um, and the whole process and what we do started by accident because of a rescue dog. Um, we're home brewers. We make beer. We brewed a batch of beer one afternoon, put the grains outside on the picnic table to go to the compost bin, forgot about it, let the dogs out, and all of a sudden there's a party on the patio and all the dogs are out there eating the uh, spent beer grains. <laughs> um, and it turns out that the, but the byproduct from brewing beer, the barley, oats, and rye, are actually grains that are really good for dogs instead of cornmeal, soy, and wheat that they can't digest. So these are a great source of fiber. So that led us to doing a bunch of research, talking to our veterinarian clinic, and finding out that we can make a really great product out of something that normally is... Um, you know, put out in the cornfields for composting, et cetera, and we make a really great biscuit out of it now. Um, pictured are the, some of the uh, packages you have, um, and also you have some on the counter as well then. And what are the m most popular brands that you have right now? Which one, which flavors? Well, we do a large biscuit and a small biscuit. So our large biscuit is four inches. Our small biscuit is a two inch bone. So we do a peanut butter, pumpkin, and a sweet potato. Peanut butter was our first flavor. It is the more popular flavor. A lot of dogs do like peanut butter, but not all dogs like peanut butter. So we do a pumpkin and a sweet potato option for them also. The other thing on, a, on the table here is our CBD biscuit. Our CBD biscuit is relatively new for us. It's been around a couple years, um, but CBD is great for dogs with mobility anxiety issues so we made sure we created one but created it the right way so that it's it's all been tested so we say it's a five milligram biscuit it is tested to be actually five milligrams interesting and then some of the dogs are just really relaxed and mellow yeah so we actually first put it on our weimaraner tiki as he was getting older he was having some mobility issues mm. put him on the cbd and we realized that you know he had an easier time getting up getting around, but as an added bonus, one day he was sleeping and there was a thunderstorm, and normally he would just be so anxious with the thunderstorm. Oh yeah, and my we, dog's like that too. Yeah, but we looked down and he was snoring. <laughs> I, I actually took a video of it because I knew people wouldn't believe us that he actually slept through thunderstorms now and fireworks and everything else because the CBD doesn't make your dog dopey and change their personality. Right. It literally works on what what the focus of it needs to be, whether it's for arthritis, recovery from surgery, um, or the anxiety issues, social anxiety, separation anxiety, uh, fireworks, etc. So Interesting. Yeah. Well, here is a slide uh, or picture of some of the main uh, facts about the products. And 
there are some of the ingredients. Those are there's pumpkin, sweet potato, and uh, spent grain, the beer grain. And right. there's they're all natural, and they're packed with protein. Exactly. And so the reason we do the three different flavors, peanut butter is the most popular, like Petrina said. Our peanut butter is literally just ground up nuts. There's no salt, sugar, oil added to it. And the commercial peanut butter that you buy in a jar typically has a product called xylitol in it. Mm. And xylitol mm. is a fake sugar substitute, and it can actually kill dogs. Oh. Um, so our product obviously does not have that. On the back of the package, we do have the no xylitol symbol. Um, but so it's locally sourced as well. We get it from another um, person in Telford who grinds it for us, grinds all the nuts for us. Um, the pumpkin flavor that we make actually um, is full of probiotics, which helps the dogs with their digestion. It's kind of like yogurt does for people, eats all the bad enzymes in their gut. Mm. And then the sweet potato variety is full of beta carotene, which is really good for their eyes and their coat. So that's the reason we make the three different options that we do. Then kind of alternate. Yeah, right. exactly. Is there any uh, products in the future that you're going to test for flavor-wise and new ones? Well, then we have a couple other flavors that we do. So we do, uh, we call it black, uh, spelled with a Q-U-E. B-L-A-Q-U-E. Right. So it's uh, just charcoal and fresh mint. So the charcoal's good for their digestion, helps with uh, flatulence. Oh. And the mint is actually really good for their breath, but there's no chemicals used on the mint because we grow it ourselves. So we always use the thing of we get it on the way in and the way oh, out yeah. because mint, fresh mint. Breath, and then the charcoal breath. works its way out. That's interesting that it works on its way out. But there's, uh, we do uh, a rosy bone. It's our pumpkin with cranberry and cinnamon. It benefits a rescue closer to us called Last Chance Ranch. Um, they had a dog they wanted us to do a fundraiser for. We did that biscuit, and the biscuit was so popular. We've been doing it probably for five years now. It's, it's always there for us. And the nutritional benefits of that one with pumpkin, cranberry, and cinnamon, again, the pumpkin with the uh, probiotics, cranberry is really good for dogs with UTI issues, and cinnamon is a natural anti-inflammatory for dogs. So all the benefits of, of that product and what's in it is very important as well. And it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. I eat that one all the time. So yeah, we have other flavors. These are our core flavors. We do different stuff, uh, different flavors, maybe near the holidays. Um, you know, we want to try something new, but mm -hmm. these are always our core flavors. Cool. That's cool. Um, next on the picture, you have a picture where you're on Shark Tank at one time, or were you preparing for it? Can you explain a little bit about that? Um, sure. We actually interviewed twice for Shark Tank. Okay. Um, and it's a very lengthy process if anybody has ever tried to do it. There are different levels. In level um, one, you go and do your interview. Two, you get called back. Three, you submit all your financial reports. Four is the next process, five, six, and so it goes on and on and on. So we've made it to level three and four yeah. uh, different times. And, uh, you know, our initial thought was to get on Shark Tank and get the funding and, you know, do it that way. But we're actually glad at this point that we didn't get on Shark Tank because we're doing better off on our own. Interesting. So, um, we would have sold off a percentage of our business if we, you know, had gone that route. So, and But it was a good experience. Yes, yeah, we had fun. Learned. Yeah, it was absolutely a, a great time, so. Next we have here on the picture is your puppy, Pinto. One of them, yeah. Yeah, uh, Pinto is, is our social media maven at this point. She does all of our videos with Kim, um, all, of our, all of our pictures. Uh, she doesn't necessarily always like her pictures, no. uh, but she does really well uh, on our videos. She's one of the rescues. Um, she's also on one of our bags. She's on yeah. our peanut butter bag. So Pinto is featured on the back of this package right oh. here. Um, each one of our dogs has made it to the back of a flavor. So it's got uh, her picture and actually the story of how we got her. Her little bio, how we rescued her and, and the organization that she came from. Because um, all of our dogs are fosters or rescues. And we also uh, take care of military family dogs. So while people are deployed, we will take care of their dogs in our home for them. Aww. And then allow them to Skype with their animal and do whatever they need to do. So. Oh, you can all this need get the Skype with them. Because yeah, then, yeah. especially when they're far away. Exactly. So sometimes we have up to five dogs in our home, which oh. is what our township allows. Um, but currently, we actually only have Pinto being in the house right yeah. now. So. Well, oh, they have the picture that was up. That was when she was a little puppy. And yeah. She was so yes. cute. That was my yeah. favorite. And then I just have a thrown in a, a stand of uh, brew biscuits. Is that found in a store anywhere? Oh, yes. Go ahead. Yes. So that is our retail display. Uh, we've gone through a couple different versions of our retail display over the years, uh, but that one is nice and it's got a nice small footprint. A lot of the retail stores use, and it's a great way to 
get people's attention that, that the product's right there. And on our website, we do actually have a retail locator to Ooh. show you all the different places that we are for sale. So, um, cool. Yeah. You think you eventually have one here in Berks County? Um, yeah, somewhere, some store. If you want us to be in one of your stores, reach out to absolutely. us. Absolutely. Cool. That's something to look forward to. Is it something for potential growth? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, next picture I have here is you're at a special event. Can you kind of let us know what was special about that day? And That was our very first event oh, wow. that we <laughs> ever did. So if people actually zoom in on that picture, you would notice that uh, the bags are actually just little cellophane bags. Yeah. The labels were printed on our home computer. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so the, the biscuits uh, actually did not look, they they tasted good, but they didn't look good. They didn't have a, a pretty a nice print. Yeah. print. Yeah. So. so we've morphed for, for quite a time now into the current packages that we're in, which are more retail friendly. And it allows us to put all the information on the back because there's a lot that goes into packaging these days, as you know, with um, ingredients and whatnot. And the consumer can pick up our package and turn it over and see that literally we have four ingredients in our product. Spent beer grain, egg, flour, and then either peanut butter, pumpkin, or sweet potato. That's it. And for the consumer today, I mean, that's huge because normally yeah. there's, you know, a block of things you can't even pronounce. I was going to say, words. most of the stuff on the back of the labels I can't even pronounce. Yeah. And you know in our bag, I can pronounce everything on Sometimes there. less is more. Exactly. Yes. And you want to be able to read everything. Exactly, yes. And then this one here, is this one of the, can you explain a little bit about this uh, product? Okay. That is our booby bone. So mm -hmm. Kim is a 10-year breast cancer survivor. Yeah. And you. when we wanted to do something for breast cancer, um, we were trying to figure out how to do a biscuit. Mm -hmm. We found a cutter that we could do each biscuit in the shape of the ribbon. But we wanted it to be pink without doing anything artificial. Yeah. We found... Beet pulp. Ah, okay. That's a good So one. beet pulp gave us a pink color. So it's not bright, bright pink, especially with the grains, because grains are, oh, you know, okay. brown. Um, but the beet pulp gives you a pink flavor. And we tried it out, and the dogs mm. absolutely loved the flavor. And we didn't know if they would like beets, but they absolutely loved the flavor. So that's also one of our specialty flavors. Yeah, so beets are actually full of magnesium, which are really good for dogs for their bone density as well. Mm. Ah, there's the one I was That okay. is the black. So, like Kim said, it gets you, gets you coming and going. And then we have the Drunken Moose. What's special about this one? Drunken Moose is our normal peanut butter flavor. Okay. But we've added ground up moose antler. So, oh. our dogs have always loved chewing on an antler. Our antler of choice is moose antlers. It's the only antler that we'll give our dog and we carry in our store also. But when the woman cuts them, it leaves behind, for lack of a better term, a sawdust. Right? So it's the, the antler dust. We hmm. take that antler dust, we add it into our peanut butter biscuits, we get the drunken moose, and it adds calcium to our biscuits, so, which then adds calcium to our dog's diet for their bones. And so the antlers that we use are natural shed from up in Maine. They're never off of a killed or processed animal. It's a natural shed from the ground um, floor of the forest shipped down to our friend in New Jersey, and she's the one that cuts them with a bandsaw in her garage. So she's another oh. entrepreneur that is, is doing this process. But like Petrina said, uh, we, just, we prefer never to feed our dogs deer or elk antlers because they're too brittle and they tend to splinter and get in the dog's digestive system. A moose antler will never splinter. They're just too dense and hard. So the dog just picks a corner and chews on it and grinds it down. Yeah. So oh, we sell those in our store and I, online. I did some promotional modeling over at an outdoor pen and... Um... Uh, near Harrisburg mm -hmm. at the farm show and they had uh, various different uh, vendors who were selling el elk antlers yeah. they had a uh, moose and I did I'm getting a big moose one for Bella <laughs> and she was, she was so afraid of it because it was so big yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it was shooting it was kind of funny to watch her interact with it she just bark at it and just kind of jump back and I'm like it took a little while to get used to it but she just like gnawing on it yeah yeah, yeah Pinto, it's perfect it's very good for them Pinto is almost 10 um there's always been an antler in the house ever since we've gotten her she knows where they are and when she wants to chew on something she goes right to the corner there right where her antler is and goes right for it so and conversely with that we've never had a dog chew our furniture or shoes or leather belts oh. or anything because we always provide the moose antler for them so it's it been can. a great help in our household not to have any of our items ruined 
because they're chewing on a moose antler. That's good to know for people who have that puppies that problem yes, and yes. they don't know exactly how to yes. really work it out. Exactly. Yep. That's always been our redirect. So if they're you know looking to do something bad, point them towards the antler. And like I said, at almost ten years old, she still goes to it when she wants to chew on something. Yeah. Uh, the next item we have here um, is a little jar. Oh, not jar. But it's a glass with some brewskis in. Oh, it's our pint glass. Yeah. So our pint glass, we uh, we rolled that out initially when we first started, and it's kind of changed a little bit. Also, you, I think you have the old logo on there. Now we have a current logo that's a, a dog bone with the name Brewskits on it, and then on the oh, back, okay. on the back is our tagline, which is a brew for you and Fido too. Oh. We did trademark that because I know it was too cute, and somebody was going to try to steal that. So they're available in all three flavors: peanut butter, pumpkin, and sweet potato. And this is one of my favorites next um, is the Eagle's Underdog. <laughs> I, I think that's kind of neat, for a, very unique. Yes. Yeah. So we came out, came out with that one a couple years ago also. We do it in our peanut butter biscuit. But we did it in a little football shape. So the thought it would be, you know, football. a little fun so everybody can get in on football season. Yeah. Uh, is there something you can look into that maybe Penn State, because being in Pennsylvania? Yes. Yeah. Well, oh. I, think, I think we did, uh, I think that one came out during... Uh, the year the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Yep, it was. And we were just going to do it short term, but everybody it seems, to, hit, so seems to like it. So that's we the best way to find out. You exactly. Just do a little yeah. test. Yes. And that's the back side of where they're the little football shapes. It yes. So neat. Yep. And next we have a, it's a fire hose dog chew toy. Can you explain the unique, why this is kind of really cool? And... Yes, this one is actually our fire hose frisbee. Um, and in our store, we only carry USMA products. Every single thing has to be a USMA product. And we're also about upcycling, recycling, mm -hmm. repurposing. Obviously, we do that with our biscuits because we're using spent beer grain. With the fire hose toys, we're, we're getting used fire hoses from all of the fire hose, or firehouses near us. And then we send them to our lady who stitches them for us and makes sustainable toys out of old fire hoses which would normally end up in a landfill and never biodegrade and break down because there's also a rubber liner that's inside of there. So we have several different toys. We have the uh, squeaker. Um, we have one that you can put a water bottle pocket, a water bottle inside of it, and it makes that crunchy sound kind of. Is that, um, that one? Yep. Yep, that's it right there. And then some of them have squeakers in. But it, again, it's one of those things, that's one with squeakers in it, that we want to make sure we're doing our part as a sustainable type business to keep other things out of the landfill. So this is one thing that's made in our, made for us for our store. That's the big tub toy. So there's a squeaker Ooh. in the middle of that one. That one's almost about three feet low in that toy. Oh, wow. And it's one photo. piece of fire hose. So it's not stitched together pieces. Yeah. It Ooh. is, it's definitely, it's not indestructible, but the fire hose toys are definitely a durable. more durable, durable dog toy. Correct. Yes. And I didn't notice you guys had special little uh, handmade uh, toys for kitties. We did. Yes, we, we finally made sure. Uh, we do have a cat at home also, but wanted to make sure that we weren't ignoring anybody. We had a lot of dog stuff in our store and started getting a cat line. Uh, so we carry the those toys there. There's some balls and stuff like that. Those have feathers on the end, and they are uh, feathers that they haven't been. They're humanely harvested feathers. Yeah. Never off of a processed animal again, just right. off of the, the ground. So, Aww. yeah. Um, next, uh, we're going to uh, kind of go through some of um, the breweries that you work with. Okay. We work with a lot of local breweries, probably about um, 14 breweries or distilleries right now. Manitoni Stillworks is on there, so mm -hmm. they're one of the distilleries that we work with. But Brown Guys, Sly Fox, Blueprint, uh, Evil Genius is on there, Fegley's. So, we kind of get around to as many of the local breweries as we can. There's some there's a Fegley's out in the Allentown area. Yes, the yes, Valley. yes. And Allentown and Bethlehem, they have yep, two they locations. Have two locations. Yes. We don't make enough beer at this point ourselves to to generate enough for all the product that we sell because we are for sale all over the country. So working with these other breweries allows us to take grain off of their hands that they have to dispose of, and we can make them their own line of dog biscuits that they then sell in their tap rooms and restaurants. Oh, that's really cool. I, I thoroughly enjoyed learning about this when I first met you at a, an expo in Allentown. Yes, correct. Uh, I don't remember exactly what year that was, but that was a couple oh, years ago. It was a couple years ago, yes. And next, uh, we have the nonprofit here in Berks County that they will be 
supporting um, af after the show airs. And can you give us some details on what you plan to do? So a lot of the products that we just talked about are all on our website as well as a bunch of other products. So for the month of June, anything purchased on our website will give a portion of our sales back to Almost Home Animal Sanctuary located here in Berks County. And I noticed that when I was looking, they had some little pups uh, for adoption. So if you're interested in looking for a new family friend that might fit your home, I have picked three out for you guys to take a look. That's Jasmine. She's a cutie. Hmm. That one looks like Pinto. Kind of. Yeah, that's what I was wondering too. And that's just where they're located. And that's one of their pups. And that's their information. If you want to reach out to them, you gladly can. And any kind of final thoughts of anything you want to add to it? Uh, we just appreciate the opportunity to be able to um, help this rescue and feature this rescue because we, we've done this in the past with many rescues um, and you know we're proud to do it. Every month on our website we pick a different rescue and proceeds from sales on the website actually go to that rescue. So thank you for the opportunity to focus on this particular rescue and to have us on air today. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. And I'm just going to go back and show some information again for those who might have missed. These are the dogs that are available to be adopted at the shelter. Over the years, did you guys have any unique stories related to your products from customers or that reach out back out to you from when they received their, their treats with their dogs? Oh, we have a lot of customers that are loyal to even particular flavors. We have customers that no matter what will buy our black product because they find their dogs have really good digestion with it. Uh, pumpkin is another one. We've had customers tell us that their dog has this digestive issue or that one and the pumpkin is the only treat that they can give our give their dog. Yeah. So it's always nice to hear when customers have these stories for you that tell you how successful they are with their dog, which is nice. And the sustainability. I mean, we hear so much from our customers that they just truly appreciate what we do and how we do it and the sustainability of it. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. You mentioned uh, earlier, um, not on the show, but when we were just introduction you at one time, you were a police officer? I was, yes. And I wanted to know that so I thank her for her service. And did you, when you, did you ever work with any canines while you're on during your service? No, not during my tenure, no. We didn't have a canine in our department, unfortunately. Aww. So, yeah, it would have been great. I would have done it. <laughs> so, but thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And here's their information if you want to reach out to them, they're online. Uh, you're also on Instagram? Yes. Uh, our social media is basically on Facebook and Instagram. I'm not really big on Twitter, but we post almost daily to both Facebook and Instagram. You have little special like activities? Because I know some posts you have that are really fun to interact with. Yes. So we do different things either in-store or online uh, a couple times a week. We'll do a Thankful Tuesday, sometimes in-store, sometimes online, as well as a we call it Freebie Friday. There's a little gift stuff away on, on a Friday, whether it's, like I said, in-store, we'll have you come in. If I can do stuff online, I do that, too. I know one time I saw, I think it was an Easter egg hunt you guys had set up. We, we did. We have a lot of fun with our Easter egg hunt. Uh, we didn't do it last year due to COVID, but we were doing it again this year. The dogs are great. They actually go out and look for the Easter eggs. They're all packed with brewskits. And <laughs> then there's one special egg that's hidden out there, and they're able to come in the store and get a special prize with that. Aww. It's fun to see the dogs running around and everybody, we've done it a couple of years now and everybody gets along and all the dogs do really well. It's a lot of fun. Well, we had 60 dogs this past yes. year. So. Oh, wow. Yep. 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 We separate them by size and weight so that everybody, so it's fair for everybody. Well, thank you. I enjoyed the show and I believe that in the future, if reach out to them, uh, they have a nice stand here in the community. And I look forward to their growth and 
thank you for joining me here today. Thank Thanks you so for inviting us. Appreciate it. I am your host, Felicia Heinsohn. Thank you for watching Organic Elegance. Thank you.